Good evening folks, this is Mike Strange from Paradise Farms out in southwest Arkansas. It is May 31st, 2024, and I'm about to move the, the cows into their an evening paddock. Um, I've been moving them about probably four times a day here lately just to get some Get some extra weight gain on them, stimulate their appetite, stuff like that. As you can see, this is my lead cow. She's a long horn. And just called them and let them into a new paddock. I think this is probably their, like I say, the fourth move today. So they're all looking good. Um, most of them were just staying around. I mean, they got plenty to eat still where they were, but instead of making them clean it up, I'm gonna give them this fresh, fresh grass, get them stimulated, eat that, and then this evening they will finish this off and then I'll give them access to where they have been this whole day and they'll go back and kind of regraze, but at least this way they'll all get the good stuff. We got a lot of clover in there, as you can see the white clover, white and uh, Bermuda grass and a bunch of other stuff. I have to forgive the the mess here. This is leasing this and it's uh, a lot of stuff in this pasture, but that's okay. They'll eat around it. They'll they're like weed eaters and uh, trimmers and stuff. They'll they'll trim around all this stuff and keep stuff from growing up in it. And we had one uh, new heifer uh, yesterday. Uh, had a calf. I got out of here early in the morning, about 6:30, and I noticed it laying on its side. So I went and investigated, and she was attempting to have a calf but it's left leg front left leg was uh, hooked backwards so by the time I got there this morning it was I noticed that it was it was too late the, the calf was already dead but uh, I was able to pull it out the, the heifer survived but uh, I'm not sure how she's gonna do she's her she was laying on her back leg and and uh, have probably a little nerve damage so um, well she see how she makes it I was able to talk to the vet and get a um, cortisone shot for her, um, type thing a steroid shot and uh, we'll see if that works she's 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 healthy and I'm you know got her separated and stuff so no one's messing with her, and uh, those are all my new little calves here. These are all from a South Pole bull. This little um, white and red one is a, a half, half South Pole and half Longhorn. So You can probably look back at one of the other videos and see where she where where uh, he was born anyway. Um, wasn't too long ago. This was uh, one of our latest ones besides the one that passed. She's a Corriente, and the calf is half South Pole, half Corriente. Mom and baby are doing great. So. But that's why, you know, I try not to assist in pregnancies when I'm here, or in births when I'm here, um, unless I actually have to. But, uh, and that's one of the reasons is because you know, I'm not here all the time. And, you know, you also have to sleep. And so the mom needs to do her job, give birth without problems. And most of them do. But occasionally you have one that that doesn't, 
and you have to intervene. But had I been there earlier or not, you know, then I may have may have been able to help. But sometimes, like uh, the last one that had a leg back there that like that that I had to assist with, by the time I was able to get to her, I mean I noticed it, but I couldn't get her isolated enough to to uh, assist until it was too late for the calf anyway but that that heifer did survive so we will not be keeping those and we will be not not be seed, selling those as seed stock so we'll either take them to the cell barn or, or put them with the steers for finishing so that we can um, at least uh, get some meat off of them um, in the in the real world in the light in the in the wild those uh, heifers would not have survived because they would have that baby would have been stuck they would have been stuck on the ground and they would have been eaten as well so sometimes you have to go with nature and not uh, give them a second chance you know um, if you're one of the softies that wants to give them a second chance then by all means contact me and uh, we'll give them a second chance but uh, I'm not willing to pay for that so but if you are then let me know and we can try to figure that out anyway I just love sitting there watching them eat I say this is really good forage Lots of Bermuda, lots of a little bit of winter grass, lots of clover, so really good mix. This here is one of the steers that will probably be harvested this year. 226 is one that I had to assist a birth with too, so. Um, or actually she lost her calf same same way as this one lost her calf like i say she's doing great but, and the calves are just as cute as can be it's neat to see them hanging out all together and playing and stuff it's quite enjoyable There's another one of my steers, this uh, Brindle one here. And as you can see, this grass here is, I don't know if you can see this, but it's definitely up to my, up to my elbow, if not further. A lot of grass it's a wonderful thing to have it's a uh, forecast to rain probably every day the next week I don't know if y'all can see those uh, purple martins flying around the cows there's also some cowbirds flying around and some egrets those purple martins are and some dragonflies even so that's really awesome they they grab the flies um, but as you can see, there's not a whole lot of flies on them because we got a very good population of dung beetles now and they really help with uh, drying out the manure pats and, and taking them underground so that the flies don't have much to, to, uh, to hatch their babies in. As you can see this one here, 135, is very skinny. She got wormy. Um, we have dewormed her. I don't like to do that, but uh, you know, you gotta keep them alive. You know, and I hear some people say, you know, I'll never worm my cattle, um, but um, I won't worm the whole herd. But if there's individual animals that are not doing well that are getting sick, like this one, then by all means worm them. If you have to worm them again, then I will get rid of them but down here in southwest Arkansas it is very humid very rainy and uh, 
we were just right above the border of Louisiana. It is, like I say, very humid, very, very, uh, very hot and uh, humid, and the worms just thrive here. So you got to get uh, your cattle adapted to it, and or you got to treat them. And so I'm choosing to try a hybrid approach. I'm doing natural treatments uh, when I have to with uh, diatomaceous earth and shakily basic H in their water. Um, and then because I am a part-time rancher farmer um, and I got a real job in the city, I can only come out here every other weekend. And so most of the time, unless I got a good ranch hand, then uh, I have to give ivermectin to the ones that um, have to have it. Uh, but again, I don't do the whole herd, only the individual animals. So there's plenty of manure for the dung beetles to go to um, and without killing everything. Because ivermectin will kill the dung beetles and it will also kill the, um, the worms, the earthworms. So I'm really trying to get the soil healthy and it is working guys. It is about year three and it is working. So we're about to we're about to finish up year three and start year four. So it's uh I'm seeing major improvements in the land in the in the health of the soil and the health of the grass and then also in the health of the cattle. It uh it's been a long journey. It's been you know Cows getting sick, uh, grass not growing, and stuff like that. But uh, we're finally there, and the cows are doing wonderful. At least most of them. Like I say, that's this one here. She's. We had to deworm her. She's getting. She's starting to gain weight again. Uh, she does have a calf on her, so it's going to take her a little bit longer. But. Uh, some of them you don't have to worm, some of them you do. This one here is a longhorn, and uh, I have to worm her regularly, unfortunately. So she has a beautiful calf. She's a great cow, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep her much longer. Anyway, this is Mike Strange, Paradise Farms. I hope that y'all have a wonderful evening. Talk to y'all soon. Hello, this is Mike Strange at Paradise Farms in Southwest Arkansas. It's June 3rd and uh, summer grass is really here. It's really kicked in. This is where they're going. You can see the bahia from through the grass mainly uh, mixed in with a whole bunch of other stuff. So they're really enjoying this. Lots of evidence of mushrooms, so we're finally getting the some uh, fun, fungi, some mycorrhizal fungi and stuff like that in here. So, but uh, it's about three o'clock. I've already moved them uh, twice today, so this is really just uh, I just made a real small. You see that reel right over there. Um, not very much space here, uh, basically where the golf cart is and that reel. It's a just real short paddock just to stimulate their appetite. It's not really time to move them yet. I usually move them about again at four, but as you can see, they're all laying down, ruminating. They've stopped eating. Um, this is where they're they've been. There's they still got a lot more they could eat, but. Uh, I could uh, keep them in here longer and make them clean this up a little bit, but uh, I'm really trying to get some animal performance on them and get them moving. So I'm just gonna just get them up and move them to this little small section. They'll have the rest of that. Um, this will probably take them about an hour just to get them up, move them, and that'll stimulate their appetite. They'll start eating again um, instead of laying around not eating at all. As you can see, most of them are either laying down or standing around. 
I'm gonna give them a call. You'll probably hear them answer me. But they're content right now. They're not. They're not real hungry. They're so I may have to actually go physically touch them to get them up. Um, in some cases, because they they're content. But uh, here we go. Try to try to stimulate them. See what happens. So you notice they all look at me. Some of them are answering. So come on, guys. All right, we're gonna to have to go. You see, on cue, they start pooping and peeing. This is we want them to poop and pee over here where they've already eaten. Come on, girls, let's get up. Come on, everybody up. Everybody up, let's go. Come on, girls. Got a bunch of them over here in the shade. I don't know if you can see those over there. Let's see if they start coming here in a minute. Let's go, girls! She's our newest mom right here. And that's her calf right here. And that's a half South Pole and half Corriente. And my mom is Corriente. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Everybody up. Come on, everybody up. Let's go. So let's go, girls. Come on. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Come on, baby. Everybody up. Good girl. Come on. Let's go, everybody up. It's a good sign though when they're not hungry. Obviously, they will come eat more as soon as I open up this gate. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody up. Come on, little guys. Let's go, babies. Come on, 40. All right, come on. Everybody up. That's a cute little pair. Come on, let's go, Mama. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, let's go. Everybody up. Come on. Come on, let's go. She's so friendly. She has no flight zone. I have to push on her. She still probably won't get up until everybody else does. Come on, baby. Come on, let's go. Everybody up. Come on. Everybody up. There we go. Let's go, 39. Come on. Here we go. All right, come on, girls. So let's go. All right, take this off here. Keep it one-handed. It's not always easy. Come on, girls. Let's go, girls! And red 35, there's Corinthia. Usually, is my her and yellow 85 are my lead ones. Like I say, everybody's content. Let's go, girls! Come on! Come on! Let's go! Fresh grass! Let's go.
All right. So far, they're just a content. Come on, girls. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Woo! Let's go, girls. Come on. Let's go. All it takes is one. Once one makes a move, see, here she comes. One of them's got to make a move. And then they all come. As you can see, she's full already. Big old barrel there. That one over there, she's uh, getting close to having a calf. calves falling up we've got these others that are on the other side of the fence she knows she gets shocked but she doesn't care she goes under anyway but she gets the best grass that way too And as you can see, they were all content, and now they're all eating again. So sometimes, if you have the time, you can just make a little small paddock just to get them up and eating again. Help them gain weight. They can, by stimulating them, you can make them overeat by about 20% 20, 20 a day. Um, but, you know, it takes a lot of effort to do that. And today I just happened to be out here taking care of one that uh, the calf, uh, the mom uh, had trouble giving birth. And so we had to pull the calf and it had a problem with its uh, nerves. So we we're having to manually get her up. Um, but hopefully she'll recover. We'll see. I'm not sure. She, now we were able to get her up and she's standing on her own now when we get her up she'll take some few steps but she's real wobbly and so and then she falls but uh, we're getting there she's she's getting her, her feeling back I think in her leg so hopefully it'll be another day or two and she'll be good to go I hope well this is Mike Strange at Paradise Farms, signing off. Y'all have a good night. All right, here's the rest of the herd coming up finally. Went and uh, got them out. They're all coming up. And they'll start eating too here in a second. As you can see everybody over here is just Happy eating.
the stragglers down here. She's having some problems with worms and we dewormed her and her, she's starting to feel better, but uh, she needs to gain some weight. It's very tight in there. They'll clean that up real nicely. And we'll move the final move here in about an hour to the rest of it for the rest of the night. And then they'll have open this whole whole area. Alright, y'all have a good one. Alright, little update. Uh, this is Mike Strange from Paradise Farms. Still June 3rd. It's about 5.30 or so, we're getting a thunderstorm here. Um, I just opened them up to their evening paddock. And I don't know if you can see this, but it is storming, starting to storm. Wind is really blowing. Um, I'm up here. See this? Big brush tree line here. So I'm parked up against that in the golf cart. And but it is uh, raining sideways here. And most of them are unfazed. But it's starting to lightning. And but they're out grazing in it anyway. I'm over here protected by this tree line, as you can see. There is uh, not a whole lot getting through this. You know, that's uh, one good thing about uh, having a, you know, lease in a place that's overgrown on the fence lines. You can get up next to it. That's the north. So this is coming from the north. That's the north fence line. I'm parked up against it. It's protecting me a little bit. Protecting the cows a little bit but we got a cow in here I don't know if you see this over here that's one of my steers but uh, he's still like mm, she is in heat they are Mostly unfazed by the heavy rain. And you and I will be taking shelter. But the cows don't really care. Well, there is a storm coming. I'm getting, still getting a little wet, well, a lot wet, but that's okay. The scary thing for me is the lightning. But, you know, if I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to get wet anyway, so 
Might as well stay here for a little bit, up against this tree line, and see how it goes. See if it'll blow over. I haven't checked the radar yet. Figured I'd just uh, shoot this video and let y'all see that, you know, I want y'all to see all them calves just running. That's kind of cute. a little bit but it is uh raining very 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 hard right now but they don't seem to care there's a few of them up under here in this uh this little grove of trees here just stand there but most of them are out grazing I still got one straggler over here. I don't know if you can see it. Most of the calves are going down over here to the fence line. Even some of them are just out grazing. Don't really care about the rain. Kind of interesting. Well, at your update, it is raining really, really hard. Well, we're thankful for the rain. It's uh, the third of June. We do get lots of rain out here in southwest Arkansas. Very thankful for that. Grows good grass. Hopefully, the basement doesn't play. Talk to y'all later.